Three of the world's most extreme athletes are about to start the journey of a lifetime. Traveling around the world, motivated by one equal goal. They will fly by spectacular landmarks, under bridges and jump buildings in the Far East. Experiencing extreme conditions and amazing landscapes, they will discover that things don't always work out the way they want. I honestly don't think we should argue about this. They will test their friendship, explore new cultures and experience all sides of life all in the search of the perfect flight. I think it's more wind now than it was 15 minutes ago. Yeah, you okay? I know. How, how, how high is this one? 36th floor, big corner. Recording? Hi, it's uh, run a little. Three, two, one, step. Yuki and Ludo has just arrived in Bangkok, Thailand. The goal for this trip is to base jump from a skyscraper somewhere in the city. Espen will join them in three days, but until then, the guys will check out potential buildings and landing areas. We just arrived in Bangkok, and this is one of the trips that I've been looking forward to the most. And we're gonna do uh, nothing but uh, fun base jumps off uh, buildings. It's, it's scariness that actually makes me very aware of what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it, and to actually keep my mind where it's supposed to be and not just fuck around, you know? Jumping in a building, especially in Bangkok, like in that place, that's a lot of different factors that you have to take into consideration. It's, it's, it's Bangkok, so it's, it's a total chaos with the wires, like it's cables everywhere. So we're checking out landing areas and see how much is going on down there which is a lot because it's a busy city, so I wouldn't expect anything else. Building jumps is more Yoke style, so he likes that, and somehow he managed to convince me that I should do it. I must admit, I don't feel super good with jumping buildings because I never did it. I have mixed feelings, I'm a little bit nervous. As far as we've seen now, all the buildings that are here, it looks like it's a really sick playground for the boys. The first night the guys scout the city to see what kind of landing areas they can find from potential buildings they have chosen. Landing on the highway was currently their only option. I'm not doing this, no. I understand. No. No, no, it's, it's no room. People are driving like crazy, they barely move out of the way for that. I need better chances of survival than that. I don't like it. I don't like I it. I don't. No. The red sky? Yeah. Oh, we could. Jumping buildings in Bangkok is definitely hard because some of them you really need to, uh, to have a good plan. Well, I would have loved to find uh, another better landing option than the highway because when we drove past it, it was a lot of cars driving really fast. I know, I know it's scary, but we're, go we're gonna have a look around and see if we can find something else. So I don't want my canopy to land like on the highway and then get snagged by one of those cars. That would be the end of it. So we're still gonna have a look if it's better now. Unfortunately, this jump was too high risk, so they have to come up with another solution to get a jump done. So after trying to do uh, some illegal jumps that didn't actually quite work out, we uh, started looking for the potential of finding uh, some legal possibilities and see if it's possible to actually get some permits. So thankfully to my sponsor, they helped us out uh, by giving us permits to jump the biggest building in Thailand. They're gonna shut down the street, they're gonna give us ambulances and they're gonna make it everything prepared so we're gonna have a great session. 
On the third day, Espen reunites with the group. He is fired up over the news that Yuki has arranged a legal jump from Thailand's tallest skyscraper, the Bayoki Sky. How are we gonna go and pick up Espen? I wouldn't call it a once in a lifetime, but it's rare in my lifetime experience. They have permits to jump from the highest building in Thailand. Actually, I'm pretty stoked, dude. <laughs> I love jumping buildings, it's so fun. It's like being inside an action movie and you are the actual uh, stuntman star and everything at once. Bayouki Tower, the highest building in, uh, in Thailand. It's uh, a little bit above 300 meters, about 1,000 feet. It's a nice building to jump from, it's uh, quite vertical. When I look around this city, I'm thinking, this is a lot of gnarly landing areas. It's uh, high buildings around the building that we're gonna jump. Uh, the landing is kind of small, it's a small street. It's, uh, it makes the wind a little turbulent in it. I am mentally preparing to land on that narrow street down there. Uh, I know from other people's experience that uh, wind conditions can be a little tricky in the town. So I'm just getting used to the visual, how it looks from above. You really have to put your mind and effort into being able to do a jump. It's not just showing up with your uh, packed parachute and say see ya, you know. You have to actually uh, come up with a really solid plan and, uh, and stick to it and kind of just, just have the nerves to, to live it through. Because sitting and planning uh, a mission like that, it's still a little bit like, oof, you know, you can feel the, you can feel the, the adrenaline building up. But once you're committing, once you're starting to, uh, to play the game, and do it in real life, that's when the nerves start kicking in. The next morning, the weather is not looking promising. The wind conditions are far from ideal. Base jumping in this kind of wind from a skyscraper can result in an uncontrolled landing that can be extremely dangerous. They can only hope that the weather will calm down at sunrise. It basically means that um, it's strong wind, we have to wait. It's really bad actually because um, the thing is that uh, usually in wind is not a big issue because we jump in big open space in the mountains. But in the city, all almost just two meter per second is can be horrible and it can really fuck you up big time. And you feel here that it feel, now it feels like the wind is coming from there, but it's actually coming from over there. So right here, it's so much uh, rotors. No, we don't. We don't really this was one of the last days with actually good looking weather forecasts. Uh, I got a really bad feeling that we're not gonna be able to jump here in Bangkok because it was simply hauling ass. And when it comes to jumping in the urban environment, not even a tiny gust is acceptable. Now we're gonna go up to the, to the balcony and uh, wait for the sunrise. After a couple of hours, the, the wind finally calmed down a little bit. It wasn't 100% perfect, but it was, it was jumpable. It was, it was just within the limit. Conditions were not perfect, but that was our chance and uh, we took it. After some discussion, Yuki and Ludo are the first guys out. This being Ludo's first building jump ever, he is feeling the nerves. A bit nervous, I must admit. I'm about to do something I'm not used to, so... I know I can do it. It's something not outside of my competence. I know what a base jump is. You stoked, man? Yep. I'm scared. It's allowed to be stoked on a day like this. I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah, dude, it's fucking heavy. Oh, man. Nervous. <laughs> oh, I love my job, though, but. It is pretty nerve-wracking sometimes. All your cameras are good? Yeah, Right? Yeah. You good as well, my best friend? Have a good one, huh? Have fun, buddy. Three, two, one, see ya.
Good job, buddy! Woohoo! Perfect! That was a very ugly exit. But it was okay. <laughs> Yeah, I was a little bit nervous up there. Huh? We decided to um, to go again because uh, it was a really nice building, and I didn't I didn't find the landing any problem. The first jump goes according to plan, and now it's Espen's turn to jump with Yoki. But the second jump is going to be quite different than the first one. We should get get the stuff on so we're ready whenever it's good. I think it's more wind now than it was 15 minutes ago. The stress level was uh, definitely rising and rising and rising. I decided to uh, to go with Espen, just do a two-way and uh, go straight. You're getting close to ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You ready? All right. Okay. Well, you're first. Yeah. Recording? Yeah. Recording? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, run a little. <laughs> How much are you gonna run? As much as possible. Ah, uh, dude, not that much, huh? <sighs> Ready, okay? Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm good. Ah. Uh, Three, two, one, step. I was looking down at the city, and then I started to prepare for landing. I was a little bit too close to the street, a little bit too close to the end of the street. Into the turn, I slipped my riser. Fuck me! It has never happened before in my life. Because I slipped it, I just kept on turning right. And I tried to grab it again, but I knew that if I let go of the other one as well, I would actually hit into the spectators. That is just not an option. So I crashed into the building. I basically fell down from six, seven meters with no canopy and straight into the street. Yeah, I am in pain, so I gotta check out my, my legs. Fuck. Not good at all. Not good. My lowest moment in life when it comes to risk management. Totally embarrassing. In the next episode of The Perfect Flight, the guys have traveled to their final destination of the season, Switzerland. Come down here, come no, just the outside of that tree. The slope here. This might just be the place where they find the perfect flight.